and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor and miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor and sinful being. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us, and has given us His only Son to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives the power to become the children of God, and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. I ask that we continue now and recite responsibly today's psalm, Psalm 47, as printed in your bulletin. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted.
only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading, the epistle reading, comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, and you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Jerusalem, 
you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Join me as together we recite the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with our hymn of the day. Hymn number 495, Look ye saints, the sight is glorious.
God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Victory. World Championship. World Series crown. Title belt. These thoughts, these worldly ideas are the pinnacle of ascension in various sports arenas. Certainly we think of Academy Awards and Grammy nominations and Tonys and all of these accolades that go to people who have achieved the highest level of accomplishment in their field. We don't think twice about raising our hands and cheering for the Mets, as some that I love do, or the Yankees, as I casually do, or our various favorite sports teams. We don't hesitate to raise our hands and, and, and just victoriously enjoy that moment with the people who actually did it. We're just, by virtue of being a fan, get some of that glory and some of that that joy that comes with celebrating. That's what today is. Today is the day when Jesus has ascended to the victorious position of his throne at the right hand of God. The creator of all things. Every star, every planet, every cell and molecule that exists is the creation of Jesus. We as believers can celebrate. We can raise our hands and, and, and celebrate with him that he has ascended. He is now at that highest position. And we as believers can celebrate with him because we get to benefit from that same joy, that same honor, that same accomplishment that Jesus has achieved for himself is available for us. We have two different versions in the readings today of the ascension moment. That, that moment in history when Jesus actually accumulated uh, by a cloud, rose into the heavenly realms. And in the, the first version, we have the disciples standing around, looking into the sky, accompanied by two men robed in white, surely angels or godly attendants, and said, hey, don't be surprised. Jesus, who you saw ascend, will return in the same way that you saw him go up. And in the second version, in, in Luke's version of that historic moment, he says that the disciples stood and watched Jesus ascend, and then they joyously went into the city, where they were continually in the temple, Praising God. You can imagine uh, all the disciples in the, in the synagogue doing the wave, you know. They're all just, you know, jumping up and down. We might think that that's kind of crazy. In fact, there's some here in the pews that are shaking their heads at me saying, no, nah, that's not right. But the reality is, what stops us we have to ask ourselves, what stops us from doing that? What stops us from joyously embracing the idea that Jesus is the champion? Jesus has risen to his throne. Jesus now oversees everything that is in existence. He and the Father are one. He shared that with us last week in the scriptures. He and the Father are one. And if we believe that he and the Father as well. We now have an advocate there with us in heaven, standing for us, who's already won for us the victory. The championship is ours. The title crown belongs to us. We can celebrate. We should celebrate. Oh, the celebration will have an 
and heaven will be far greater than any victory parade, ticker tape or otherwise, that could have been posted here on earth. But we should celebrate every day with thanksgiving and praise to God that Jesus is there, looking down, guiding, leading, and encouraging us to live this life that he's called us to live, and not on our own accord, because his word continues to live in and for us through scripture. His Holy Spirit has been given that truth would be revealed to us as, as the gospel today said, their hearts and their, their eyes of their hearts were open. The disciples' eyes of their hearts were open that they would truly see Jesus for who he was in their presence and who he is now in the presence of Almighty God part of the Trinity. One God, now and forever, available for us as our victor, our advocate, our friend, our loving Heavenly Father who hears our prayers, answers our requests, and has a will for us that far exceeds anything that we can imagine. Our only our only stumbling block is our willingness to cheer. Our willingness to embrace what God has planned for us. Our willingness to say, I'm part of that team. I'm in. Go team Jesus. I want in on this game. I want in on this team. I'll jump on that bandwagon and I'm going to ride it to victory right alongside Jesus to return. Ascend in your life. Ascension is something that we can aspire to, something that we must aspire to. Every day we grow closer to God. Every day we move closer to being the person who God wants us to be. He wants us to be more like Jesus. We can be more like Jesus because he is alive, living, leading, and guiding us every step of our way as we descend to him. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We'll continue now with the offertory song. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the Lord may 
originally supply us with faithful pastors who will preach your word in season and out, and that we may hear, believe, and live out this gospel. We pray for Synod President Matthew Harrison, Bishop Derek McCakes, Circuit Visitor Charles Byer, for our church council, our board of deacons, and the leaders of our congregation. Lord, may your Holy Spirit continue to bless and guide them in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the nations of the earth may seek peace, and the leaders of our country may, per may pursue justice, righteousness, and peace. That the pandemic may come to an end, and that the livelihood and common life may resume. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That all who are afflicted may be strengthened in illness and comforted in adversity. We think especially of those listed in our prayer folders, those who have requested our prayers publicly and privately, those names that we lift up to you now, Lord, from our hearts. That the Lord may grant us joyful hearts and peace at the last, knowing that neither death nor life nor any powers can separate us from the love of God in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may be as generous in our tithes and offerings as the Lord is in giving us his gifts. That we may support the poor and those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may remember the saints of old who contended for the Lord in their own day and that we may join them at last in the marriage feast of the Lamb without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray to always remember our first responders, our medical professionals, and those working to keep our nation safe, including those active military members of our congregational families, Patrick, Kelly, Adam, Joseph, Ryan, Robert, Amber and Ashley, Lauren, Josh, Nicole, and Jonathan, for these and all who work on behalf of those who look to them for safety, Lord, we ask that you protect them and watch over them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, Lord, we commend to you all those for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you.
peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.